Here are some of the highlights of the January New York International Numismatics Convention Platinum Session Signature Auction. Let's start things off with a wonderful gold pattern crown of Edward VII from 1902. If this coin seems to be reminiscent of England's pre-Civil War Hammond coinage, that is because it was quite clearly modeled after the tower crowns of Charles I from around 1632 or so. Only six of these are known to to exist in gold, with Edward's proud equestrian portrait on the obverse in full coronation regalia, as well as the Anglo-Saxon monogram of London or Londonia appearing in the field just behind. This type is rarely seen either in silver or gold. In fact, a general reference like Krauss doesn't even list this coin. This coin is an extract from the Eliasburg collection and was graded by PCGS as SP62 and at auction was sold for the sum of $192,000. Now, this is actually one of my favorite coins of all time. Not merely from the British catalog, mind you, but overall. The 1817 Three Graces Crown by William Wyan. Yes, the same William Wyan of the Gothic Crown and Una and the Lion fame. Both coins, incidentally, were also represented at the auction. A wonderfully toned 1847 Gothic Crown with a majestic grade of proof 67 cameo from PCGS that was able to Obtain $168,000 by the auctioneer's final call. And sadly, not an original 1839 Una and the Lion, but rather a gold trial of the reproduction run that the Royal Mint made briefly in 2019. Specifically, a 2 kilo gold version of that, graded as proof 69 Ultra Cameo from NGC, that also sold for $168,000. But turning our attention back to the Three Graces crown from there, it stands as a triumph of new classical design, with Ireland, England, which at this point in history legally included Wales, and Scotland to the right are allegorized as the mythical Three Graces, their arms clasped in a sisterly embrace, symbolizing the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, graded by NGC as proof 63 Cameo, this titan of the British numismatic market was sold at auction for $210,000. As one of only two known Dutch East Indies Hulden coins struck in gold, most likely as a presentation piece, this Dutch colonial coin is of the utmost rarity. Normally seen in silver, this one Hulden coin bears the date of 1839, the second year of mintage for the three-year silver type, and just a single year before William I abdicated as the King of the Netherlands. Exquisitely preserved, this coin attained a grade of SP62 from PCGS and was sold at auction for the sum of 240000 dollars. A rare patent crown or five shilling coin is up next. This patent, produced by Spink and Sons in 1887, distinguishes itself in a few different ways. Queen Elizabeth's titles and legends on the obverse that read Victoria by the grace of God, Queen of Great Britain and Empress of India are engraved in English and not the customary abbreviated Latin. In addition, the three quarters portrait is another unusual touch. The coin was determined to stand out as the date below the beautifully rendered coat of arms, replete with rampant lion and unicorn, is indicated in Roman numerals, another departure from the established norm. 1887 was the same year as Victoria's Golden Jubilee, celebrating 50 years as Britain's ruling monarch, slapped by NGC with the enviable grade of proof 65 plus ultra cameo, this rare Victorian Patton attained a closing price at auction of $264,000. A tremendously rare example of a gold donator from Russia's last ruling emperor, Nicholas II. Minted in 1895, uh, with a 
reported mintage of only 36 coins from the St. Petersburg Mint. The obverse depicts a rather flat and uninspired portrait of Nicholas II, who would be the final ruling member of the Romanov dynasty that ruled Russia since 1613, up until 1917, when he was forced to abdicate when Vladimir Lenin and his Bolsheviks seized power during the revolution of that year. This rare half imperial of 5 rubles is graded and authenticated by PCGS as SP62 and at auction it managed to attain a final price of $264,000. A tremendous rarity of Romanian coinage is presented next, a gold 20 lay proof pattern coin from 1868, declaring King Carl I as the ruler of Romanians in direct defiance of the Ottoman Empire. Supposedly, the coins were commissioned in secret, with the dies being cut outside of the country. Only 100 of these coins were imported, with a number being deposited in or at the foundation of Peles Castle, and the king used the rest as a type of votive or presentation piece to his personal and political allies. Though another decade or so would pass before Romania officially declared itself fully independent from the Ottomans. This coin is graded as Proof 62 Ultra Cameo by NGC and managed to raise $336,000 at auction. It's a curiosity that the reign of Queen Anne is often overlooked in favor for the drama and spectacle of her predecessors, but as the last Stuart ruler of England, she oversaw the union of Scotland and England that created a united kingdom of Great Britain in 1707. This is an example of a rare pre-union five guinea gold coin from 1706. Apart from the date, obviously, the best way to tell the difference is the quartered arms on the reverse of the coin, as the post-union coin will display the unified arms of England and Scotland towards the top and bottom, as opposed to the individually quartered arms from before. At auction, this implausibly well-preserved specimen was sold with a grade of PCGS MS63 for $408,000. And then we have a truly remarkable coin, an English gold voided long cross penny of 20 pence issued by Henry II in the year 1257, with the king's goldsmith William of Gloucester as the moneyer. Now, these were the first gold coins minted in England since Edward the Confessor's infamous gold penny almost 200 years prior. It was also an unmitigated failure, as the coin was undervalued and had to be withdrawn from circulation, with the crown having to buy back the coins at 24 pence each. It would take about another hundred years for the gold noble to become the first viable English circulating gold coin. Now, it's not like there wasn't an appetite or a demand in circulation for gold coins like this either. Both archaeological and documentary evidence make references to Byzants being used as money, which are Byzantine hyperpyrons. Think of them as a sort of... Uh, equivalent of late Byzantine Solidus coin. Not only that, but Sicilian Augustales and even Almohadi Dinars, presumably brought back after the Crusades, were known to circulate at the time. Now, this coin is a remarkable new find, discovered by a metal detectorist in 2021 and registered as such with the British Museum, and represents a brand new die pairing of this specific issue that was previously unknown. To date, only four of these coins, including this one, is known to be in private hands with another four specimens in museum collections. This example is authenticated and graded by NGC as uncirculated with a details grade, for you know whatever that's worth. And at auction, it managed to get a closing price of $504,000.
One of the most storied coins in British history is the famous 1663 Petition Crown, crafted by Thomas Simons specifically as a showcase of his talents as an engraver, to petition the king, Charles II, to appoint him as his new chief engraver at the Royal Mint, instead of the Dutch Routier brothers, who managed to ingratiate themselves to Charles while he was exiled in Holland during the Commonwealth era. The petition is engraved in two lines on the edge of the coin and reads, Thomas Simon most humbly prays your majesty to compare this, his trial, with the Dutch, and if more truly drawn and embossed, more gracefully ordered, and more accurately engraven, to relieve him. The petition proved ultimately fruitless, but it did leave us with what has to be one of the most lifelike portraits of Charles II during his reign. Today, only 14 examples of this coin can be positively identified identified, with seven coins known in private collections and another seven in museum or institutional collections. This example is graded as NGC MS62 and at auction it very nearly managed to breach a million dollars when it sold for $960,000. Subscribe to WNN and activate all notifications with the bell icon to know when new videos are released. For the world numismatic news, I am Numismans Thank you for watching, keep collecting, and have a fantastic day!